India is undertaking one of the largest scientific missions of its kind, the Gaganyaan mission, where an Indian astronaut will be sent in, on an Indian rocket from Indian soil into space. And as Prime Minister Narendra Modi says, on this occasion, the countdown will also be ours. I have with me Wing Commander Rakesh Sharma, till date, the only astronaut, cosmonaut, and now we should actually call him Gagan Yatri because that is what Prime Minister has called the Indian astronauts as they go into space. This is celebrating four decades of that very historic mission by Wing Commander Rakesh Sharma. Uh, Cosmonaut Sharma, how was the training for the mission? Well, I think, uh, firstly, the selection was difficult. It went on for quite a few months. And the training itself, when we landed up in Moscow, uh, it was the thick of winter. So although we stayed there for 18 months, more importantly, we stayed there for two winters. So uh, the training essentially was in Russian language, and that made it a bit uh, more difficult. We had to first learn the language and then uh, start uh, uh, concentrating on, on the content of the training program. Uh, but time did fly fast, and uh, I think uh, at the end of that time, we were very well prepared for the mission that was assigned to us. Uh, it was a time-bound mission. I think uh, even at that time, elections were around the corner, yeah. and uh, we had to we had we had to finish the slide before that. So, uh, so it was new. It was something we had done before. It was learning on the job, and uh, I, I I would say that. Uh, one had a lot of expectations, although mentally one knew what to expect, but what one saw far exceeded one's expectations. So, so I think uh, all in all, um, I must consider myself extremely fortunate to have been uh, uh, given a chance, a choice, uh, select, being selected for a mission like this. And uh, I, I do consider myself very, very lucky indeed. You, you, you. You were the first person, if I'm not wrong, to do yoga in space. So you are the Antariksh Yogi for India. <laughs> How was it to do yoga in space? Well, um, let me give you a bit of a background. The yoga experiment was included in, in the list of experiments because uh, till that time, there, uh, everybody was looking for a solution to avoid space sickness. And there were various preparation methods, the one which West followed, the one which the Soviet Union followed at that time. So here was an attempt to find out if the yogic method of preparing uh, space travelers uh, to withstand the rigors of space, uh, whether it would uh, offer a different a viable alternative. So I was the only one both Ravish sir and myself uh, did yoga uh, about three to four months before the launch. And we had stopped training as per their training regimen. Idea was, again, to find out how well prepared are we in comparison with the Russian uh, uh, cosmonauts. Prior to the launch, during the adaptation period, uh, while in orbit, after returning, and during the readaptation period, so so I did only yoga, and uh, the results were compared with those of the Russian uh, cosmonauts when we returned. And um, obviously, this begs the next question: uh, whether or not the experiment was successful. You asked me how how difficult it was. Well, um, it was. Uh, it did uh, teach us a few lessons. Because uh, doing yoga in space is, is means that you're doing it in zero gravity. Whereas on Earth, when you're doing yoga, there is gravity. So uh, the tensions which were there, those were missing in orbit. 
So uh, a very a contraption, a harness was designed with elastic cords to replicate that gravity. But then even balancing yourself is a bit difficult. So I, I would say that uh, if a purist had, had seen us doing yoga, he would have been uh, quite disappointed. But what we learned on that is that in future, if this is going to be practiced, then, then we'll have to really improve upon the harness system. Um, the results, well, I was none the worse uh, compared to my uh, Soviet colleagues. So one can at least say that uh, preparation by the yogic system uh, was not worse than what was being done. But to say that uh, it was better, I think we'll need a wider sample uh, before we can come to that conclusion. So, so do you recommend that India's Gaganyan program and Gaganyatri's do yoga uh, both before their flight and during the flight and later? Well, I, I really would leave it to those who are getting the experiments together because uh, after now that time has passed, one thing that has not changed is, is, is the physiology of the human being. So I guess from that aspect, uh, it would remain relevant. But uh, let the people who are deciding the suite of uh, experiments, let them, let them decide what can be done, what can't be done. I mean, this is but the first flight. I think for the first few flights, it's more important for us to prove the systems, uh, make sure that they are reliable so that we can continue down this path. Uh, these experiments can happen uh, if the scientists so feel, if the biomedicine experts so feel, and, and that can be done at a later stage. Uh, we've discussed earlier, and you have also spoken about using space as a peace for. Can you expand on that? Remember, we discussed that while we were at the Sabarmati Ashram in Ahmedabad, which remains a stellar interview. And you had discussed how, and, and, and I had called you the Antariksh Mahatma at that stage. So oh my God. Two, 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 Antariksh Yogi and Antariksh Mahatma. So, so tell us a little bit about your ideas on how to use space as a place for everlasting peace on earth. You see, Pallav, this, this thought came to me. Uh, I, I guess the trigger was uh, uh, what uh, Prince uh, Sultan uh, Salman uh, of Saudi Arabia uh, had said. When he went up in orbit, he said, you know what, you don't see boundaries from space. And uh, obviously that when you do go up and see that the beauty that is there and also that the boundaries are not visible, one always wonders as to why uh, do we then, uh, why haven't we been able to break out of the circle of conflict for centuries now? And then you start thinking, obviously, the root cause of this is because the powerful have always been dispossessing the weak, even of the natural resources which were under them. Uh, so, obviously, the distribution of wealth has not been equitable. So, uh, in, in, my, in my opinion, uh, space really can be leveraged uh, to improve uh, the uh, socioeconomic standards of people uh, of, of all the countries. And I think ISRO uh, has demonstrated this beautifully uh, because of the vision of Sarabhai and uh, uh, the earlier stalwarts who have guided a space program. And today, uh, all the benefits of uh, um, space technology application have been put to use uh, in our country and uh, to, to uh, a very good effect, whether it is telemedicine, teleeducation, uh, teleconsultation of various things, remote sensing, you name it, uh, and uh, space uh, activities, applications have touched the lives of very many of our country folk, apart from uh, giving an impetus to the economy itself. So what I thought that what ISRO has do, done for India, India can perhaps start small, but do for the region, and later on probably scale it up. And uh, uh, if we can all come together, the spacefaring nations, instead of competing 
uh, we start collaborating and whatever we get out of space, uh, we share this because the United Nations has mentioned very clearly that uh, space belongs to all of humanity. So, so let us not start colonizing uh, using the inclusive model, uh, you know, uh, uh, I'm sorry, exclusive model. Uh, so we should really, whatever farming which we do, whether on asteroids or on the moon or on Mars, if, if we can spare that wealth with, with everybody back on Earth, I think we will be removing the root cause of conflict. And so I think it is time Having done, uh, having been mired in conflict for so many centuries, it's time to do some peace offense. So that was my thought process. Any message for the four astronaut designates which India has chosen, like you? They are also Indian Air Force test pilots and, and uh, all fit and ready to go, I'm told. So any short, crisp message for the four astronaut designates as the only person from India who's been into space? You see, Pallav, I've been uh, very closely associated with all four of them. And whatever I had to say, I have been sharing my experience and whatever my learning has been, I have uh, uh, shared with them. Um, everybody uh, approaches this with a different mindset. But since they are experienced test pilots, I'm quite sure that they would be as excited as I was, and they would be as, uh, um, shall we say, they will concentrate as much as, as I did, uh, if nothing else, uh, to make sure that the mission is a success and the country gets uh, the Air Force and the country gets the accolades for it. And given ISRO's recent uh, history, uh, and uh, successes, I have no doubt that uh, they will perform well, all four of them. They're professionals, and they will achieve the mission objectives, and they'll return home safe and sound. And uh, I really look forward to having them join the band. Lovely. You're still very fit. Given an opportunity, would you want to fly on Gaganyan to go into space again? Well, I'm not as fit as I would have liked to be. Uh, however, if uh, if I do get a chance, I would love to go there as a tourist because this time, instead of working, I would love to, <laughs> uh, you know, stick my nose close to the window to watch the world go by. I didn't have much time to do that during my flight. Lovely. India also has a plan to set up its own space station by 2035 and then to land an Indian on the moon. Do you think these are exciting targets and goals that the Prime Minister Narendra Modi has set for the Indian space community? And now we say community because it's going beyond this row now. Yeah, um, uh, it is It is indeed exciting. It is, I would say, it's quite uh, analogous to what uh, uh, Kennedy had done for the U.S., uh, putting, raising the bar and saying we are going to go to the moon, uh, the, and 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 they did. So uh, we we must uh, keep the bar high uh, because uh, that's the only way we will accelerate our efforts. I would also like to say that, as I had mentioned earlier, that that we need to get our uh, uh, social model up to speed so that uh, we don't go there and carve boundaries uh, and like we've done in Antarctica and say what we get from here is ours. I think if we follow the UN dictum and, and the vision which the United Nations has, then it should be a collaborative effort because settling on the moon or settling on Mars, in my opinion, is beyond the resource capability of any one nation. So it, I think cooperation uh, is uh, recommends itself, and I think the earlier we do that, the better off all of us will be. Uh, I do believe that uh, um, you know this is going to happen sooner rather than later, and uh, all of India's efforts in terms of science in space have been to include everybody, which is why we've shared the scientific data with whoever 
uh, has been collaborating. So we have not kept it for ourselves. Well, both you and I may like what we say, but India has signed the Artemis Accords, and the Artemis Accords maintain that private companies can mine whatever resources are there. And the space policy which India has enunciated, uh, there's no space law, but the space policy by India also enunciates uh, private use of uh, resources from the uh, outer space. So you may be in a minority, uh, Wing Commander Rakesh Sharma, in your views. Well, yeah, maybe, uh, and I'm I'm not ashamed to be there. I think uh, it is an experiment worth trying uh, because th there is no other alternative. Like I said, we've tried all other uh, methods uh, and it all ended up in conflict. And is that what we want? Do we want to export conflict into space? So we have to find a way. It's private sector being there is is no guarantee that it will go to it's going to end up in conflict. I do if we all see the light at the end of the tunnel, if we can all believe that the earth can be a better place for everybody, if we can make it uh, the development sustainable, and if you can carry all these messages, then there is no need to then heaven is right here on earth, on our planet. So let us not go and build hell in some far off planet. So le le let's get the model right. Uh, it'll help us, our society, and uh, I think it'll help in, in reducing conflict. After all, all of us are going to have children, grandchildren, great grandchildren. So let let's think about them. Absolutely. When we towards the end, as India prepares for a major space effort in Gaganyaan, and then to explore Mars once again look at moon once again, look at Venus, and probably have a landing on Mars soon. We need young people into the space community. Any message for youngsters who are aspiring to become space scientists, Gaganyatris, or simply people who use the data for uplifting and doing development in India or the world? Yeah, the message I would like to really uh, give them is that uh, I would want them to get real and know that this kind of activity, uh, let them not get fixated on the glamour aspect. It's hard work. It's not easy. You've got to stay invested. It's, it's, it's a bit unnatural because you're going to be going... <clears throat> The transportation system itself is going to lock you up in a cylinder for long periods of time. There's going to be social deprivation. You may have to, in the future, work uh, with multinational crews. Uh, there will be cultural conflicts. So this is not a cakewalk. It's, so be very sure uh, what is lying uh, ahead and uh, the environment you will be asked to function in. Having said that, uh, I also would like to point out that there are many, many disciplines uh, which will open out. If you're going to make a settlement on the moon, you don't need only astronauts. You're going to need engineers, environmental engineers, construction engineers, and all of this, the same kind of skills which are available out here. I think your job only would be to make sure that you are mentally prepared for this long haul for this difficult work. And if you are there and if it excites you, well, the world is going to be, uh, well, the universe is going to be your oyster. <laughs> On that very happy note that the universe will be there and waiting for full exploration with humans in the loop, like you did explore the solar system and looked at Earth and India from space. Uh, thanks a lot for speaking to me. Uh, cosmonaut or Gagan Yatri Rakesh Sharma. May you have a long and healthy life and may you fly into space once more and this time <laughs> on an Indian rocket, on an Indian crew module. And like Prime Minister Narendra Modi says, 
when the countdown will also be ours. I look forward to reporting that from Sri Harikota. Thanks a lot for speaking to me. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Always a delight speaking to you. Thank you.